it's an 8.15 start time as well. What do you do all day Saturday getting ready for an 8.15 game? It's a great question. I'll, I'll take suggestions if you have any. We, we have a, a fairly common model that applies to games that start at 6 or 7 or 5. So basically we'll do the same thing, it just, just move everything back. And so there'll be an early breakfast for early risers, a late breakfast for late risers. Um, the buses bring, um, we, the team is off in a hotel the night before the game and so the buses will bring them over here around 10.30 and then the players will report back here to the complex around 5 o'clock. Um, there'll be some meetings and walkthroughs and some film work um, to, to refocus them after some time at home. Uh, and that's about all we know how to do. Even for home games, you stay in hotels. What's the purpose of doing that even when of, you're in Provo? A lot of family members come in for the games. And while family members are excited, especially for the entertainment value of the game, that's quite different than preparing yourself mentally to play the game. And so as a team, we stay uh, just together, uh, which is a great chance just to bond and, and to share common experiences. Then we go off and do our fireside or our service activity which is even a greater way just to be together um, because we consider even though we have great support um, it's different being on the team than supporting, than supporting the team, family members as well um, and we just think it helps um, unify us. Does that go for the married players as well? It does, yeah. Um, any players that have family members come to visit um, they're able to visit with them out in the lobby of the hotel but um, the rooms are kind of our private sanctuary and and even where we eat and so that's just a place for us to, to be after a hard and long week of practice to, to have some time just to be ready for the game. So then you're not concerned Saturday because they get to go home for a bigger part of the day. You're not concerned about their mentality then? That by then um, most of them uh, have a chance to stay here if they want and watch film. Um, there's plenty of places to, to just be here in terms of sit and hang out. Um, but a hotel kind of gets um, crowded and you get a little bit antsy in staying if you're confined. And, uh, and so rather than have them confined, we'll let them get out, move around a little bit, see the people they want to see, and then we'll bring them back and, and hopefully recapture their preparation level from before. You don't do firesides before every home game. This is one where you will do one, but the weeks that you don't do a fireside, what's the service that you do? Um, it just depends. Um, Boys and Girls Club um, is one that we've done. We visited the Heritage School and had a bunch of players and myself that spoke to those kids and had a chance to interact. We go to the prison, um, the point of the mountain. We'll, we'll go and put on a devotional there. Um, any of the boys' homes or, or homes for troubled youth will go there. Um, what we found is a lot of times um, those people just really appreciate and need and want the message at a higher level than just a typical ward or congregation in state. Out of state it's much different but in state the more unique populations are the ones that really really seem to to want um, and and maybe even need the message that we have and, and it's a great experience for our players. After a couple, I think it was back-to-back -back Friday games, this is a Saturday one, how much does that extra day of rest benefit your team? We really turned it into an extra day of work, um, not including Sunday but uh, we found just a chance to use one extra day to move our team forward and hopefully getting closer to our potential with um, at least seven weeks to go and that's um, players have talked about being tired this week we worked them hard um, but again we have till tomorrow night at 815 so hopefully there's enough recovery time you played for a few years in the Mountain West with TCU what are your thoughts on their getting a bid to the Big 12 they're a good football team and and they will uh, they'll certainly be competitive and they've earned the chance, as I think we have and others, um, to continue to play at the highest level of college football. Uh, but I think it's great. Some fans were maybe disappointed that it was TCU and not BYU. Do you think that's a, a good goal for BYU fans to say, we want our team to be in a BCS conference? Or do sure. you think they need to be happy and think, you know, independence is a great thing? Both. Um, for now, independence, being able to share our mission, the number of people that are seeing our games is already unreal in the feedback we're getting the way that our message is being spread um, with the exposure, all those things are positive. Ultimately, we, we want the access um, to the top tier bowl games as well. And so again, I, my job is to, to earn and to, to lead this team so they can earn that place. And uh, I think we're very close. So you think independence is a means to an end? Do you think a BCS conference is the ultimate goal of the BYU I think, football team? I think access to the BCS system um, has to be part of our goal. 
whether that can come through independence, Notre Dame has it. Right. Um, so however that comes, um, uh, that is one of the goals that we have with the exposure that we're getting. Has this week kind of felt like fall camp did last year as you're trying to do another quarterback battle? It really hasn't. Um, I know a lot more about both quarterbacks and they're both so much more settled, so much more mature and, and they're both very good players. And Jake has done a fantastic job of leading our football team, helped us get a bunch of wins last year, helped us become bowl eligible and, and will continue to be a very, very fine quarterback, if not one of the best that's played here. Sometimes uh, this community, sometimes the pressure, sometimes just being the quarterback at BYU is, is a heavy burden. And sometimes uh, you can learn a lot uh, with an opportunity to step away for a moment as well. And, and maybe the second half of uh, the Utah State game or the last quarter and a half, uh, I hope it provided a valuable learning experience. And it was great to then see Riley have a chance when he was prepared as he was to lead the team. And so. Uh, I just I love both young men and I would love to care for them both and the team. Does the quarterback position at BYU have more pressure than other schools that you've coached at? I, I don't think there's a, a school in the country that has more pressure um, than BYU um, in relation to the quarterback um, from a couple of reasons. And you have several Hall of Famers to thank for that. <laughs> I, I think so. Um, number one, we've had great players that have come here and we have great players now. Uh, but again, 98% of this school is of one faith, and so the chance to be away from the quarterback position, when you're the BYU quarterback, that's 24-7. It's wherever you go in Provo, it's wherever you go with your wife on a date, it's wherever you go um, to church, um, and that goes all the time, and the things that are said and the comments that are made, good and bad, that, that comes with it. And so that's a heavy mantle to bear but a great opportunity and it just takes a while for the head coach as well. How much do you lean on Brandon Doman then because he's been a BYU quarterback and really unless you've been one it's kind of hard to relate to them. I don't lean on him much but I ask him to provide that for uh, his quarterbacks and and he took him a long time to get his opportunity and so he's been about through everything that any one of these kids could have from backup to a player that no one thought could be the player to then getting a chance halfway through a game to then being the starter and um, and then going to the NFL and being a backup, and, and so his perspective will be very helpful. As you evaluated Jake and Riley this week, how do you balance seeing what they've done in a game performance as opposed to what you're seeing in practice? Yeah, really, really difficult. Um, and practice didn't have nearly as much weight um, as simply the body of work um, that we can't dis um, disacknowledge, I guess, from Jake and how well he has performed, but I also can't not um, acknowledge the way that Riley led the team at the end of the Utah State game and and having said that then Riley will get the chance to continue that going into tomorrow's game even though Jake probably had the best week of practice that he's had since he's been at BYU and and uh, again how long and how the quarterback battle will continue it remains to be seen but Riley's earned the chance in my opinion just from the way that the team finished and responded and end the last game to get a chance to be the first player out tomorrow. So Riley will start tomorrow. Riley will start. During the week then, because you're the defensive coordinator, but it was also clear that you were going to make the decision on who started, what were you looking for then in practice as you evaluated? Just, just competitive will. And again, uh, practice was a component, but really what came down to it, the overriding factor, um, wasn't practice because Jake practiced very, very, very well. Uh, it was um, just watching our team perform down the stretch a week ago and seeing if that's sustainable with Riley at the helm. And, um, it takes nothing away from Jake. Jake could very well end up being our starting quarterback again this year and for three more years to come. Um, uh, but that was a pretty remarkable performance by, by Riley a week ago, and I think he gets to, should have the chance and earn the chance to continue that. When did you make the decision during the week? Early, early in the week, um, even though it was uh, um, held kind of confidential until then. Uh, just that thought never left my mind that that's what probably ought to happen. When did you make that decision public then? Right now. As you're evaluating Jake and Riley, where do players like James Lark maybe fit into that? Do you see them getting yeah, a chance? It's, it's hard. Two is plenty and three is hard to train and he's certainly capable. Just there's only so many repetitions and the third quarterback doesn't get many and it's hard to, to make that happen no matter where you are. Um, and so he's capable, he's trusted and if either Jake or Riley went down, he is uh, we wouldn't worry about putting him in the game to help us 
move our ball, move the football, and help us win. What's the likelihood that two quarterbacks play against San Jose State? Man, uh, hard to say. Uh, likely, what percentage? I'm not certain. Uh, very few games have gone as as has been predicted. Um, we're a team right now that has struggled to score enough points to really pull away from an opponent. Um, but we're a team that has a lot of heart and grit and determination. And uh, if a game like Utah State happens um, with Riley as a starter, um, Jake could have his opportunity to come in and, and finish just like Riley did and, and then continue um, uh, forward, kind of never looking back. So hard to predict how it will You're not uh, necessarily planning on we're going to use both guys then? Not necessarily. Just playing it by ear then? Yeah. San Jose State, a team that BYU used to play in the WAC, they're one of those six teams that you've contracted with. Is it hard to scout for a team that you've never played? You've had to do that a few times this year. Not necessarily. They've, they've played enough games now, um, and I know uh, the coaches that um, have coached um, against them to get some feedback. San Jose State is talented. They have an excellent running back. Their quarterback is very accurate, excellent tight end, good skill players solid football team um, this year in particular and so there's no easy games and every team that we play is seems to be well coached and so again but rather than focus so much on San Jose State I would I would really like our team to reach our potential. I haven't looked at my pronunciation guide lately but Tui Pulotu I think yeah. that walked on at BYU what do you remember about him? Really nice frame I think he had walked on at Utah first then walked on here tall rangy good athlete um, was here for about a year and really, really a nice kid. And um, I believe we were playing him as a defensive lineman. Uh, I think he's still playing that position for them. I'm not certain if or if he's a tight end now, but um, he's a good athlete. You've had guys like um, Ross Oppo, who played against Texas, Riley Nelson playing against Utah State, that played against teams they either committed to or even played for. Have you talked to them, or do you know from experience you played against BYU um, when you played at Oregon State? I mean, can you? Tell us what a mindset would be as you're playing against your former team. It, it was the motive for my college choice. Um, I chose Oregon State because they played against BYU. Um, I felt slighted and that I'd been overlooked and et cetera. And the reality was I just wasn't a good enough player. Um, but I chose Oregon State kind of from a, from a vindictive mode, which is silly. Um, but there is a lot of these kids that want, want and to show they belonged here, could have played here, could have had a significant role. Um, and then after they've proven that, like in my case, five minutes later, then you wonder, well, now what? And uh, it's not long-lasting. Okay. Thanks, Coach. Thanks.